HD0. We've heard the name more and more as of recent, but what exactly is this thing? But before we can talk about this future in technology, let's talk about where we came from and what we currently have. So it all started with analog and the analog system. And I'd say approximately 90% of pilots probably started with the analog system, just like me with these kind of box style goggles. Now this system has a lot going for itself, including being very inexpensive, it's very reliable, and there's an abundance of parts already on the market. But there's some downsides to the analog system, including a low definition image, a system that's prone to interference, and just manufacturers making less and less of the analog gear. Now in the past four years, there's been an updated form of visuals in the FPV market, and that was called digital. Now it was spearheaded by DJI, yes, the company that makes camera drones, and they introduced their digital system called the DJI FPV system. Now DJ had a different approach. Instead of sending analog waves of information to the goggles, they decided to send packets of data or information to the goggles to be interpreted by computers and by microchips. The end result was a video feed that was broadcasted in HD or high definition with limited to no interference at all. Now the downside of all this equipment was that it didn't come at a cheap price. It was very expensive and other manufacturers could not duplicate the technology leading to a higher and higher price. Now because of the monopoly of this equipment, there's been little change or progression since the introduction of this technology in the FPV hobby. Now this all leads to current day and the HD0 program. Now this all started as a collaboration between Fat Shark and DiviMath to provide an alternate option to the DJI system. So where HD0 tries to differentiate itself from DJI is by producing an HD digital signal with low latency while still being inexpensive. So have they succeeded with that initial promise? Well, mm, kind of. It is HD, that's for sure. And it does have a lower latency than the DJI system. Where it's questionable is, is it inexpensive? Is it more inexpensive than DJI? And that's kind of subjective. Now take for example, we have this DJI goggles right here, and this is a requirement for the DJI system. This can range anywhere between $550 to $600. On the other hand, we have this total HD0 system right here, and this alone costs the same price as this one goggles right here. Now at the same time, let's say you have the existing DJI equipment here, and now you wanna convert your analog drone to a DJI drone. Then you'll have to go get a camera and VTX for said drone, and this costs anywhere between 150 to $180. Now similarly, if I wanna convert my analog drones to the HD0 system, I will have to get a VTX and a camera for said drone. Now the cost of this is also around 150 to 180 dollars as well. So in this case, there's really no benefit or advantage in the HD0 system when we're talking about price. So now that we know what the HD0 system is and what it provides, let's talk about how all this stuff here works. The good news is these components work very similar to the analog and the digital system by DJI. So let's start from the front where most of the image is coming from, and that's your camera. This is an HD0 camera, it is digital. Now these cameras are specific to the HD0 systems, so no, you can't use your cameras from your crash DJI drone. It has to be a specific HD0 camera. Now these cameras are pretty cool, they're very good, they're good with latency. There's some cameras that offers a 16 by nine aspect ratio and some that offers a four by three. In this case, we have a 4.3 aspect ratio here, which is pretty good for FPV flying. Now the whole HD0 system is designed to provide a very smooth experience and these cameras are no exception. They're designed to provide very low latency and a smooth experience with limited jello. Now because HD0 is relatively new to the FPV market, there's not too many cameras yet available for pilots. There's approximately four to five cameras available to you. This is the Runcam HD0 micro camera. This is the V2 version. And it's said to be the best camera on the market thus far. Now once the image or information leaves the camera, it goes to the VTX via a MIPI cable. Now this is special, and this is not included with the camera or your VTX when you do buy them, so make sure you get a good quality MIPI cable for the HD0 system. Now as I said before, this cable here is very interesting because there's a lot of leads, a lot of connections, and that leads for a lot of pathway for information and data at really high speeds. That leads to a lot of low latency, which is what they want in the HD0 system. Now once the information leaves the MIPI cable, it goes to your VTX. This is one here by HD0. This is the Freestyle VTX, capable of one watt, so it's pretty strong in the power output. But there's numerous VTX in the market, approximately four to five as well. And just like any other VTX, this thing broadcasts an image. 
to your VRX, which is your receiver, or in my case, the goggles, which has a receiver built into it as well. Now the VTX for the AC0 is pretty interesting because it does broadcast the information to your goggles or your receiver at really high speeds and includes small information like timestamps so that your goggles can reconstruct the information not only quickly but accurately. Now just like any other VTX on the market, power output does play an important role in whether you have a good quality penetration and or range. Now in this case we do have a 1 watt VTX which is the highest to date for the HD0 system. And this should provide pretty decent penetration and decent range. Now, once the signal leaves your VTX, it goes to your VRX, or in my case, my goggles. These are goggles by Fat Sharks. These are the Scout HD. Now, these receivers are pretty cool and interesting because they consist of usually two patch antennas and two external antennas as well. Now, most receivers, and in my case, the goggles here, will receive the information as quickly as possible and try to decode even if the information is missing or corrupted. Now a cool feature of the receiver, or in my case the goggles of the HD0 system, is its ability to show beta flight telemetry. Now that's very similar to what you see in your OSD and your analog goggles, and that's special because DJI at the time of filming cannot do that. So that's a welcome sight and something we've been asking for for a long time. Now what do I think about the whole HD0 system? Well I think it has a lot of potential. The fact that they're offering HD in the digital form with very low latency, I do think that's gonna appeal to a lot of pilots. Now the HD0 is not perfect by any means and there's some areas of concern with this whole system. The first thing is that this is a new technology and is not adopted by the majority of pilots in the FBB community. That means that manufacturers are gonna be a little bit hesitant to making products with the HD system already in their drones. Now you have some manufacturers like Happy Model with their Mobula 7 and they do have the HD0 system in their drones. So that's pretty cool. And hopefully that's a sign of things to come in the near future. But until that happens, I know a lot of pilots will be kind of hesitant to jump and invest in the HD0 system. Now the second area of concern is scale. And what I mean by that is even if pilots were to jump aboard the HD0 system, there really isn't a lot of components on the market for these pilots. Like currently at the time of filming, it's really hard, almost impossible to get a VRX for your goggles or a VTX. And this is happening because the DiviMath company or corporation is still a very small company at this time. They haven't gotten to the scale where they can mass produce these components. Now, ultimately, we don't know the true potential of the HD serial system yet. This is still pretty early in the infant stage, I guess you can call it. But this reminds me a lot of Express LRS in the earlier days. You know, people said Express LRS was not gonna get off the ground, it was gonna be dead on arrival, but it has been adopted by almost all pilots and even manufacturers now are including their Binafly drones with Express LRS receivers and transmitters as well. So I do think that the HD0 system will evolve into that. And the biggest thing, the biggest thing about this is that the DiviMath Corporation is listening to the pilots and making changes as they go, which is very reminiscent of, yes, Express LRS. So I do think there's a huge potential in the HD0 system, and I'm investing in this right now, guys. Now, over the next couple of weeks, I'll be doing multiple videos, taking a deeper dive into the components of the HD0 system. So if you're interested in seeing that, hit that subscribe button so you'll be notified whenever I do drop that video. Now, I do think it's only a matter of time until this becomes a viable option compared to the DJI system. And if you wanna see how this DJI system actually performs or how it compares to the actual HD0 system, I've made that video and I'll leave them linked right here. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Peace.